Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and I am here today with lesson number 14 on how to build a successful engineering career. And what we're going to talk about today is we are going to talk about the importance of respect. <clears throat> okay, and uh, the importance of respecting the people that you work with. Now, what you got to see is, is that when you come into an organization, even if you're a new engineer, there's sort of three different types of relationships that you can have. First of all, you have a boss. Your boss is the person that you work for. In most cases, even among the hardest cases, in most cases, even amongst the, the most, uh, you know, clueless engineers, most people will come in with sort of an intuition knowing that they should be respectful of their boss. Okay. Then besides your boss, so you work for your boss, besides your boss, there's people that sort of are at your same level. So there's the other engineers in the organization, maybe in your department or other engineers in other departments. Those are people sort of at your level. And most engineers <clears throat> will, will have respect for the other engineers. Okay. Because it's, it's like, okay, you know, maybe, and, and in fact, you know, engineers can kind of go at it a little bit, you know, sort of a, you know, a, uh, uh, sort of uh, robust debate or robust discussion, a vigorous discussion or vigorous debate. And, and that's okay. I mean, that's still respectful. So that, that kind of goes good. So you work for your boss, you respect him. There's an element of respect among the people that you're, uh, that you're working with. But there's another level in an organization. And even if you are a new engineer, they're sort of in the organization support staff. So what would the support staff be? This might be people with two-year associate's degrees that are technicians or test specialists or are sort of uh, technical guys that actually do a lot of the actual work but don't have that distinction or that, that uh, uh, designation of being an actual engineer or a staff engineer. They're sort of a support technician. Okay. Other ones would be secretaries. Uh, you know, there would be a secretary in the organization other administrative support staff okay and this is where engineers fail it's not showing those uh, those support people the respect that they deserve and particularly for a new engineer that comes in and let me let me tell you kind of where this comes from man <clears throat> we've talked about in the earlier lessons how hard it is to get an engineering degree so if you've been through the ringer for four years and you came out with a degree man that degree is something that you cherish that's something that you hold out as really really special that's something that you think makes you special now we've got into the kind a danger zone here right yes it's hard to get yes it's good that you get got it yes it's an important thing to be an engineer but when you start thinking that that makes you special because you have an engineering degree you're getting in the danger zone because you can either consciously or subconsciously disrespect the people in the organization that are in those support roles, the guy that got a two-year degree, well, he just got a two-year degree. I'm a real engineer. He's just a technician. That attitude, even if you're not saying it out loud, it starts coming out in the way that you interact with those people. And that, my friend, will kill your career. Now, bachelor engineer it can be an issue. Bachelor's engineers cannot respect the, the support infrastructure, the, the technicians and the secretaries and the clerical thing. That can happen. But man, it seems like the more education you get, the worse it gets. So you get a master's degree in electrical engineering, you're a little bit, you're a little bit, you know, more of a problem. You know, it's just like that degree makes you a little bit more special. Okay. Now we go like I hate to pick on people, but PhDs, it gets really, really bad. Okay, it gets really, really bad. And I know a lot of people that had worked very hard to get a degree and were very smart people and were very educated people and were very hardworking people, but their career never went anywhere. They never achieved what they could achieve, could have possibly achieved because of this arrogant attitude that they brought to the organization and this lack of respect for the people who had less education than they did. You know, it's just like, okay, 
I mean, you know, not only like like they not only look down on the the support staff here, but I, uh, you know, you, this guy's an engineer, this guy's an engineer, and this guy came in with the PhD. He's not only looking down on this guy down here, he's looking down on this guy. He, ha he has this superior attitude that either consciously or subconsciously comes a a across, and man, that is a career killer. And, okay, I hate to say it, almost the worst are PhD physicists. Because the PhD physicist will not only look down on the technician and the secretary, not only look down on the bachelor engineers, not only look down on the master's engineers, he will look down on the PhD engineers because he's got a physics degree and he really knows what's going on to where this guy is just a PhD in, uh, in engineering. PhD physicist, watch out. Watch out for this. It will kill your career. And I have known many, many, many more master's level electrical engineers that had way more impact on the company and went way further in their career than these arrogant PhD physicists. Like, yep, I hired PhD physicists because you know a lot. You're a smart guy. You're a hard worker. You can have impact on me, but don't come in with this PhD itis attitude. Okay, you're a guy just like everybody else don't think you're better than somebody else all right so so all of us though i mean all of us have to be cognizant of this like no matter where you are in this hierarchy that you respect the people that don't have as much education as you do <clears throat> all right while i'm here i might as well tell you even worse than phd physicist or phd mathematics uh, because that's like the ultimate knowledge is is to have a phd in math and they even look down on the phd physicist so man this becomes a hard thing to manage. So what guy do you want to be? You want to be the guy that respects everybody. So let's just kind of come back to the more norm. You've got a bachelor's or a master's level in electrical engineering. You're new on the job. You come in here and you're thinking how important it is to impress the boss and how important it is to have a good relationship with the boss and how important it is to do a good job for the boss because that's how you'll get ahead. Well, yeah, those things are all important. But you know what's even, I think is even more important than the relationship you have with your boss. It's the relationship that you have with that support staff. Because those guys that are doing the hands-on work, those guys that are doing the clerical support, those guys that are in and out, sort of in the trenches doing the work, those are going to be the guys that make you or break you. Okay, they understand that they have <clears throat> a more subservient position in the company and they're not going to take you head on okay they're not going to come in and duke it out with you head on you know what they're going to do they're going to operate in a mode called passive aggressive behavior let me give you an example you come as an, in as an engineer and you really prize that it means a lot remember that that engineering degree it makes you special and you know what you disrespect the secretary. You put her in her place. She doesn't have a degree. She's not as important as you. And you get on her because something wasn't done the way you wanted. Now, you know, people need correction sometimes. But you got on her in an inappropriate way, at an inappropriate time, in an inappropriate manner, and you humiliated her and you made her feel bad about this mistake that she made. Okay, you know what? She has ways of getting even with you, and it's not going to be getting up in your face like you got up in her face you know what's going to happen it's going to be you've been on the the job about eight months and you really need to get this experiment done <clears throat> and you don't have time to do it by the books and so what you're doing is you're bringing some hydrofluoric acid into the electronics lab and that really should be in a chemical lab and that should really be with a fume hood and stuff and you're in there doing this kind of commando operation because you just got to get to the bottom line phone rings. You're not in your office. Secretary answers it. It is the corporate ES&H, Environmental Safety and Health Crew. And they're going to come by to the electronics lab today and they're going to do an audit and they're going to do an inspection to make sure that everything is done right. Okay. What does she do? Oh, she makes the note that you got the call from the ES&H lab. Oh, and she goes, she knows that you check your mailbox, she check, you check your mail slot like once a week. So she goes and she puts a little note in the slot 
okay, in your mail slot. You're down there pouring HF acid in the in the electronics lab, and who walks in? The environmental safety and health Nazis, and you are nailed, and you are nailed. And she's sitting back there, and you're looking at her, and she says, "Well, yeah, they called. I put the note in your box. Okay, it's that sort of thing." Same thing with the technicians. Like, like a lot of times the fabrication is done by the technicians and the testing is done by the technicians. And I'll tell you, if you're not respectful of those people, your stuff is going to get lost. Your stuff is going to get broken. Your stuff is going to get mishandled. Oops, out of the 400 steps of the integrated circuit manufacturing process on that one lot that was going to be a make or break for your career. Oh my. It was an oversight. Step 17 wasn't done. Your lots didn't work. You don't get the results that you needed. Your career goes nowhere. So, first of all, man, it sounds kind of it sounds like I'm being kind of cynical. For, first of all, you need to respect people at lower levels just because they're people and they deserve respect. Okay, they deserve respect because they're people. The fact that you have an engineering degree does not make you more important than someone else. You might have more authority in the company. You might have greater responsibility. You might have greater decision-making uh, 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 capability, but that doesn't mean you're better than those other people and you have got to treat them with respect. So I've kind of cast this negative, but there's a positive spin to it. Man, if you respect those people and you go out of the way to go for, to bat for them and they see you as the guy that is looking out for them, is respectful of them, is appreciative of them. Hey man, you're the guy that on Friday you take them all out to lunch and you buy their lunch or you bring a barbecue grill in and you set up out behind the fab and man we make hamburgers for these guys or any time that you give a paper or a conference presentation or maybe you're the speaker at the big company meeting and you take time to say what a great job they did if you're that guy that is just oozing out respect for them man they're gonna go to bat for you and when the brass tacks I mean when it comes down to the rubber hitting the road and it's a make or break thing for you they are in there for you and there is nothing that is a greater asset to your career and a greater asset for you being a successful engineer is to have the love and the dedication and the commitment that you've earned that you you do things such that you earn these things from that support staff okay because what they think about you and how willing they are to go to go to you know go to the mat for you that is going to be one of the biggest things that's going to influence how successful your career is and i'll be honest a lot of these phds that i saw crash and burn it was because they were arrogant and they did not respect the support infrastructure and the support infrastructure just never put out anything for them it was sort of like everything always almost worked but there was always something that just didn't quite come together for that guy's project okay it was this passive aggressive uh resistance that these uh that these folks were doing okay so what are we going to do we are going to respect everyone we're going to respect our boss that kind of comes natural we're going to respect the people around us at our same level even if they don't have the same degree of education that we have and then we are going to go out of our way to respect those technicians and those clerical supports. We're going to bring them food. We're going to take them out to lunch. We're going to say their name. We're going to sing their praises. We're going to come down there. Sometimes just come down and get on that, that fabrication machine and work with them. See what they're going through. See the world from their eyes. Go in there. Work with them as they're doing the testing. Don't just sit back in your office and wait for the results to come in. Get down there and work with them. Roll up your sleeves, okay? Man, this is one of the those little secrets you want to be successful as an engineer treat that support staff with great respect okay man I hope you guys am I the only one that has ever seen this or is it like has anybody else seen this does anybody know what I'm talking about I'd love to hear from you down in the comments okay if you like this think about giving us a thumbs up think about subscribing to the channel think about sharing this on your social media all right Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com I will talk to you guys later